All right. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Sarah Charles, and today I want to give you a very basic uh, overview of React Native. Uh, for those who don't know, React Native is a way to make mobile apps. I decided to do this talk today because I was trying to brainstorm for some apps that you know I want to make later in the program. I asked everyone I know if you know a good app, and they all had ideas for mobile apps. Because when you think of the word apps, people often think of mobile apps. And I was like, wow, I have no idea how to do that. So uh, first, I want to talk about uh, native versus hybrid mobile apps. So native apps are apps that are written in uh, mobile languages, like Objective-C, Swift, or Java. Uh, and they tend to be very fast and high performing and have, you know, like seamless functionality. So overall have a very good user experience. And then there's hybrid apps, which can be written in any language. You can have like a web app where in whatever language you want. And then you have to use some sort of mobile application development framework, like uh, PhoneGap is a popular one, and kind of port it over to mobile. And this has its pros too. It makes it so you have one single code base. You can update your whole application, mobile or you know, web, and it just gets updated across the field. And uh, it makes it easier if you're a company and you just want to get it out really fast. You can already have your code base. You just got to get it out there really fast. Um, but overall, it has worse performance all the time. And it's going to be slower. Your users won't like it, which will mean they won't want to use it as much. And your internet access is always required as well. Uh, so we have a solution for that, though, and that is React Native. And it's very convenient for us as well, since we already know some React. Uh, so React Native was created by Facebook actually at a hackathon in 2013 uh, and became available and open source in 2015. So it's still a pretty new technology. Um, React Native is a way to uh, make a fully cross-platform app using JavaScript and React. Uh, and something I want to point out here, though, is that while you can make a cross-platform app that, you know, works for both iOS and Android using React Native, you should probably separate those two because there are specialty APIs for interfacing with both. And if you want to make a very, like, functional, fancy app, you should have them separately from each other. Uh, and, yeah, just, as I said before, if you know React, you can get right into this. All right, so one big difference between uh, React Native and an app you would write just using React is that there is no DOM on cell phones. And instead, there is a virtual DOM that's made for the native environment. Um, so this means we cannot use HTML. Uh, and so instead, we have components that were written for the React Native library. And, they, uh, and if the React Native library doesn't have them, there's some written by the community that are helpful as well. So a few big ones are uh, div or any other similar tag can just be a view instead. Uh, any sort of text tag, we just have text and it's all capitalized because they're components instead of just you know any element tag. Uh, input, if you want to have like a form, there are form components written by the community, but for just you know vanilla React Native, you can just have an input tag or a text input tag. I mean. And then there's a few different ways to make lists. The very simple one is just list view. Scroll view has to encompass anything you want to scroll up and down. And then there's something called flat list, and also not listed on here, section list, for when you want long lists that you don't want to be completely pre-rendered while you scroll through it, because that would just be slow. Um, this also means something for styling, which shouldn't be surprising. No CSS. Uh, but there are, uh, there is a way that you can style that's very similar to CSS and not hard to adapt to. And it's mostly uh, inline styling, but you can also use uh, the style sheets uh, component that is written for React Native. So this is, first of all, just what inline styling would look like. Say we have a component tag, and this inline, we'd say, for this is for like maybe an image, we would say, give it this width and this height. And then this is what a style sheet would look like, which you would put maybe at the bottom of your uh, file where you have your component written out. Um, and this is just a little bit better for organization. Uh, you can see everything put together, like your CSS, you know, inline can get a little crowded. Um, and then, so if, say I made this like heading, key value pair, I could just then inline say style equals styles to heading. Um, and a few things to note are that uh, there are many of the same key value pairs as CSS, but not quite all of them have been implemented. If you're not sure, you just have to look it up. 
uh, something that is fully implemented. It's Flexbox because that's what uh, they, Graph Native decided to do for all of their you know, layouts. And uh, you can see in this font weight one that they use camel case instead of dashes for multiple word you know, keys. All right. Uh, and then something else I want to talk about is uh, handling the touches, like the touch events because we're not just clicking around, we have different touches that are going on as well when you're using a touch screen. So first there's just like, you know, simple, there's on press and on long press. That's just, you know, single press or like a long like tap. Um, and then scroll view, which I mentioned before, is kind of builds in the uh, kind of touch uh, handability of scrolling up and down. So it already acknowledges that. Um, and then there's something called touchable components, which are just ways to uh, customize your button interaction throughout the different components that you have. So it's not just buttons. Anything can be a touchable component if you know, it has the touchable component encapsulating it. Um, so there's something that can be highlighted. It can be made opaque. Uh, it can give native feedback. For example, if you're on Android, it'll show a ripple, or it can just have no feedback at all. Um, and then there are ways to handle even more complex custom touches that you want, say if you want to draw a star. There are plugins for um, you know, programming it all yourself for just like, you know, kind of mapping out what exactly what touch you want to have. All right, so now I'm going to do a quick demo of just how easy this is, if I can get to the right screen. All right, so I made the simple React app, and it just shows the dogs and cats, which I know you all love, um, <laughs> and also a turtle, because turtles deserve love too. This is just the React app, and then this is the uh, Xcode iOS simulator doing the exact same thing. So that's the two apps I made, uh, and it's very simple to do. Okay, and so then on the right-hand side, Yes, the right-hand side. This is just the simple uh, React app, which should be familiar to you guys. Um, and you can see we just have a button that's handling, showing, or hiding the picture. And then on the left-hand side, you can see we have this uh, application that uh, has a view with the style from container. And there's also some title styles here, which I think I got rid of later. <laughs> but uh, then it renders the animals component. And then we go to animals. Uh, we have our state with our animals in it. And then we have, um, oh, here's the title. Oh, yeah, title. Uh, and so then we were just, you know, doing something very similar. We do in React where we we're mapping out each animal and passing down those props to the single animal component. And then the single animal component has a handle pr a press handler which is bound to the state in the same way that we would in React and uh, has some of its own styles as well. All right, and that's about it for that demo. All right, uh, so some closing thoughts that I have about React Native is that it's still a pretty young developing technology. Uh, it's going, it kind of exploded when it came out, it's very big but it still has a lot of features that haven't necessarily been implemented in the vanilla library. Um, but it is open source and there's people always working on their own, like, you know, packages that they want to add some sort of like module component. And uh, so it's, it's a community that's uh, creating things that you can find. Um, it has great documentation, just like React. Uh, and Oh, that's it for that slide. <laughs> and I just kind of want to drive home that, like, you know, it's very uh, easy to make the simpler things from your web app straight over to a React app, um, a React Native app. And, okay, and so there's some resources that I found useful is, once again, the documentation and also um, a website I found called JS Coach, which calls itself an opinionated catalog for open source JS packages. Uh, it has a section just for uh, React Native packages where you can search and it kind of gives you some stats on like how many people have started it and how many people will use it. So that way you can kind of find like the really good ones. Um, and it has a lot of like useful things like for example, there's no table. If you wanted to make a table in React Native, you could just look and search for table on there. 
Uh, and these are some other things I found useful if you want to look at them later. Anyways, thanks for listening.